Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here, and today I'm with Angus. Hey Angus. Hey Jem, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Good. Good, so we're at the Saddle Ridge Riding Center. Yeah. There's Hope. And the horse Brady. And Brady, and we are talking about what today? Shutter speeds. Shutter speeds with EOS HD cameras. Yeah. And we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff. We're gonna talk about the relationship between frame rate and shutter speed. Sure. And how we might use specialized shutter speeds and things like that. Yep. But let's start off by talking about the two most common frame rates that we shoot HD video with. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I guess typically most people would be more familiar with, on TV at least, seeing stuff that had been shot at 30 frames per second. That's Sitcoms, right. Sitcoms, news, that uh, kind of stuff. Daytime television, yep. soap operas, yep. and those types of shows. Nature documentary type stuff. That's right. So, you know, even though they're shooting in high def, they're sometimes shooting at 30 frames per second because it gives a little bit more of a crisp look and yeah. feel. Sometimes what we refer to as a video look. Yeah. Sure. And then there's the other frame rate, which is a more cinematic frame rate that we use, which is 24 frames per second. Yeah. Let's take a look at where that is in the menu. Yeah. So you can see in here, you've got 30 frames at 1080p. Yeah. And then the next one down is 24. Okay. So let's take a look at 30 first. Yep. And let's talk about when we're in our live view here, mm -hmm. what we want to set our shutter speed to for what we would associate with that normal sort of motion blur and look that we would be looking for. Okay, so typically at uh, 30 frames per second, you would shoot at a 60th of a second. Okay, so why is that? Because, you know, I think that we're always trying to chase film and the cinematic look and, yeah. and even though 30 frames per second is not what we associate with a cinematic look there is that sort of blur or that movement between frames. Yeah there's the relationship and it all comes from film cameras yeah. where you know you had a, uh, a rotating shutter that exposed the film for half of its time as That's it right. rotated. So it traveled 360 degrees in yeah. total. And, and it exposed and the film to 180 degrees of that shutter. So that would mean that every single frame that is being exposed would be exposed for exactly half the time. Yeah. So I, if we're yeah. shooting at 30 frames per second, it would be half of that, which is a 60th of a second. Okay, so easy math on that would be that we would take our yeah. frame rate, which would be 30 frames per yep. second, and we'd double it. Yep. And then and now then you make a change. At a 60th. And now we're at a 60th, yeah. so we get that look. So yeah. let's now switch this over to 24 frames per second. Sure. So you're going back into that menu. Yep. And there you go. Yep. Okay, good. So now, if we double that, that would actually be 24 uh, doubled 48th. would be 48th. Yep. But on a... These yep. cameras don't do a 48th, yep. so we'd go to the next closest shutter speed. Yep. which is a 50th. So that would be where we would go and sort of let the camera live at a 50th if we're shooting at 24 frames per second if exactly. we want that look, that exactly. cinematic look. Yep. Now, problems. Occasionally, we'll run into issues here. We're in a 60 hertz country and we're shooting at 24 frames per second yep. at a 50th. Yep. And under certain lighting conditions, we might see some sort of frequency yeah, you might see mismatches. Some yeah. flicker from fluorescent lights. Okay, so yeah. um, the first thing we could do in that situation is we could try to change the shutter speed to a 60th. Yeah. And we'd be pretty close still in terms of motion blur. Yeah. So let's go ahead and just pretend we're doing that. Yeah. And let's just say in that lighting <clears throat> situation that we are still seeing some sort of flicker, well, in real production, we've got to change the lighting. Yeah. Or we've got to point the camera in a different direction or just figure out what the solution is to yeah. that. No, but absolutely. that is how we could deal with that. Exactly. Now, if we're shooting in PAL, um, 25 frames per second, yep. we go to Australia and we shoot something in your homeland, yep. then we would still double 25. Exactly. And, and it's would very use... easy. You get to a 50th. Right. So that's how we would deal with that yeah. situation. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about some different frame rates. The yeah. first thing we're going to do is talk about shooting at 60 frames per second. So sure. let's just take a look at what yeah. happens okay. there. So just go back into the same menu. Right. And at 60, obviously, we have to be at 720, not 1080. Right, so it's 1280 by 720 is our resolution. Exactly. And we're 60, so if we double that, we yep. get a 120. Don't have that, so we'll go to 125th. So that's really close. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's what we'd shoot for that. Yeah. Now, if we were shooting normally at, let's say, 24 frames per second, let's go yep. back to that, because yep. that's sort of our standard when we want that cinematic, cinematic look. thing, yep. If we expose each of the frames for longer, let's say we shoot at a 30th, yep. what's starting to happen as far as light? Well, you get more light onto the sensor. Got it. Which so, isn't appropriate all the time, but you know when you're really desperate for a little more light, yeah. it, it's a lifesaver. And it starts to give you that long exposure look, but when we're shooting high definition video. Yeah. So it's kind of cool and it has an effect. It's yeah. uh, subjective, but we can do that. Now, if we go the other way yep. and we shoot at high shutter speeds, yep. we see that a lot in a lot of Hollywood productions. Yeah. We have those films where we see those battle scenes and it's the check, 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 check. 
kind yep. of thing Instead and the fight scenes, smooth, motion. smooth sort of motion blur. When we do that though, now we're exposing each of the frames for less yeah. time. Yep. So what do we have to do? Well, you open up the lens on the iris or you can reduce ND on the right. front if you have it. If you have uh, or you room can to play with, your ISO. ISO. So yeah. it's just controlling light and doing Same those things. Same as with stills photography. Exactly. And the, the thing to always remember is that when we're changing aperture, we're also changing depth of field. Yeah, As true. opposed to Which, the other situations. Yeah, so if you have a, a set where you need to maintain the same look, then ND or ISO may be a good solution. Good. So I think what we should do now is we should dip to black, and we'll come back up and we'll have hope do some stuff with Brady yeah. and we can see some different examples at different frame rates with different shutter speeds because that's really what we're talking about today. Yeah. Thanks very much Angus. No worries. Thanks Jim.